Welcome to the Film Florida podcast. I'm John Lux, and I'm the executive director of Film Florida. Before we get to our interview, if you're not already a member of Film Florida, please consider joining at filmflorida.org. Please also consider going to our website and donating $20.24 for our 2024 fundraising campaign. Visit the Film Florida merchandise page at filmflorida.creator-spring.com to purchase Film Florida t-shirts, sweatshirts, coffee mugs, and more. All merchandise proceeds go to the Film Florida Filmmaker Grant and Scholarship Fund. Kent Matsuoka is an award-winning creative line producer and location manager with over 25 years experience in the industry and more than 50 credits to his name, including Hawaii Five-0, Magnum P.I., Castle, Dirty Sexy Money, Medium, Criminal Minds, House, and more. Kent is a member of the Producers Guild of America and the Television Academy. He serves on the Teamsters 399 Location Manager Steering Committee, and he formerly served as a board member of the Location Managers Guild. He also works closely with the Association of Film Commissioners International and many of their affiliated film commissions around the world. We talk about his career, working all over the world, his advice for up-and-comers, and more on this episode of the Film Florida Podcast. Here's my conversation with Kent Matsuoka. Welcome to the Film Florida Podcast, Kent. Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be with you. So let's kind of start with the origin story. What's your backstory? Where'd you come from? Uh, I was born in Northern California, spent some time between there, Hawaii, and Japan, and came down to Los Angeles to attend college at the California Institute of the Arts, where I studied fine art photography, but it was lured by the increased awareness of Hollywood and, and into the world of cinematography. When you chose to go to school there for that major, I mean, did you have a sense of where you wanted to go or was it just that you were kind of interested in that and seemed like a good good college to go to? I did have an idea of going into Hollywood, but had no context, no understanding of what that was. I was more intrigued by the photography aspect. Is that what led you to the kind of the location manager side of things is, is you're interested in locations? How did you get your start there? Interesting story. I wasn't, you know, like most people had no idea what locations was prior to starting in the industry. And while I was at school, I was at a party where we were discussing some summer plans and a friend had mentioned a, another friend who was a location scout who got to drive around and take photos and they got paid gas and cell phone. And I thought, whoa, that's a great deal. You know, when you're a college student in the 90s, no one even had email back then. So that right. was, uh, that seemed like a pretty good, good, cool deal. So I sent my resume around to a couple location agencies and got a job at one of them to shoot houses for their files and went on from there. Now you've been doing it a number of years, uh, among other things, but what makes a good location scout or location manager? Locations were initially part of an assistant director's responsibility. So understanding what their job entails is probably one of the best attributes. So as the scope of productions got bigger and bigger and too much for the assistant directors to handle themselves, that's how, you know, locations got split off into its own category. And it's one of the few departments to not only coordinate with all the other departments on a film, but it is also the one that interfaces with the community at large. So the best location managers are those who are able to juggle multiple plates at the same time, think quick on their feet, and also do it, well, all with a smile. Talk a little bit about the communications and the PR aspect of it, because, I mean, I, I was in the industry a number of years and just thought locations, people find locations, turn them over to the production and kind of wash their hands of it. I didn't realize how impactful the community relations side of things of a location manager is. Talk about that. So the location manager is generally the first point of contact with the community. So when you're a scout, you're going up to people who have no understanding of the film industry. So you're the first person they know, and they're going to be the first person they contact when they have an issue. And as a result of that, uh, location managers tend to take up a lot of the community relations role. And additionally, locations are responsible for pulling the permits with the local municipalities. Right. So they're the face that the film commissioners and the police officers and uh, what have you interact with. So 
again, they're the first person they're going to call when they have an issue. And as a result of that, public relations does become a large aspect of the job. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to that, you also have experience working in locations and in a line producer or production supervisory capacity. What inspired you to get involved with the producing side of things as well? Technically, I was actually in production before I was in locations. Okay. Locations was merely a means to an end, summer, you know, some extra cash during college. And when I, you know, when I finished school, I I worked as a PA and and worked as a production coordinator and worked as a, you know, went up that route to producing commercials, which at the time was not an organized or not a union position and kind of felt like the, you know, I wanted health insurance and pension and fell back onto the location world, knowing that they were actually a union position and called up some of the managers that I had met previously when I was a location, you know, working at the location agency. Talk a little bit about how your locations work and your your role as a producer kind of, you know, work together, how one kind of fed into being good at both of them. Well, production also deals with many of the same logistical responsibilities and securing a production office and filming at a soundstage. So many of the responsibilities overlap. And ad- additionally, producers are also the public face of a production. And that's where, you know, a lot of the public relations aspects overlap. So I find that being a location manager is actually one of the best places to train to be a a producer. And what advice do you give to aspiring producers? Uh, One of my first questions in asking somebody who's interested in being a producer is just to clarify what they believe a producer's responsibilities are. Right. So if the producer is really a kind of a catch-all position and they do tend to wear a lot of hats. Uh, and most people think that it's just about the money or just being the boss. And of course, being a boss comes with responsibilities. Mm-hmm. And the ultimate responsibility is to serve the director by fixing problems and making sure their vision becomes reality. But it's sometimes also their responsibility to be the one person on set to tell the director no, that they can't do something. Mm. And so the best advice I would say is, you know, just to go out and there and do it. If you have a friend who's interested in being a director and has a great creative vision, but aren't the most logistically or technologically minded and don't can't quite translate the vision into their head into into onto film or, you know, onto digital, but, you know, then be that guy to step up and say, Hey, you know, I, I understand what you're trying to say and this is how you do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that, that it's great advice. I, I often get people reaching out to me and asking, you know, if I want to be an editor, I want to be a producer, I want to be a director, what's the best way to get in there and, and get good at it? My advice to them is if you want to be an editor, then go edit. If you want to be a producer, then go produce. You don't just wake up one morning and have those skills. You need to to practice those right. skills. Even if, like you said, even if it's just friends in the neighborhood, friends in your class, you know, family members for all that matters, if you want to start directing them and, and trying to, you know, talk about getting people to put something on video that may not know necessarily what they're doing. The, the family is the best for that because they're not trained in anything. Um, so yeah, great advice is is to get out there and, and just go do it. Um, a, a film you worked on uh, screened at the 2023 Sundance Film Festival. Tell us about the project and share a bit more about your experience as a co-producer on that project. So that film was called Jamajaya. It's an independent film about a musician who gets signed by a major label. And you know, the label's throwing money and and promises of fame at him, but also trying to commercialize his music. And it's the story of some of the conflict, internal conflict of, do I sacrifice my own vision for the fame and riches that I've dreamed of? Or do I stay true to my vision? And, and if it takes me a little longer to reach that, fame and fortune that I wanted, then that's what, you know, I need to do to, so I feel better about myself. Did you go to Sundance for the film? I did. And it was a great experience. 
hadn't been in a couple of years. It was also, of course, one of the first years following COVID. So right. it was great to just see everyone or in a lot of you know, a lot of contacts that I haven't seen in a in a while. Um, now you're quoted in a variety uh, of industry articles about your experience and insights while filming in Hawaii during the production of Hawaii Five O. Are there any fun onset experiences or challenges you had from this project in particular? Uh, I wouldn't say that there's anything uniquely to Hawaii. As with any project filming outside an established production center, the biggest challenge is getting crew and equipment at the last minute. So it requires a lot more pre-planning. And Hawaii is pretty well established with multiple flights out of LA. So it's not quite a desert island, <laughs> but you can't always hire experienced day players on a big day or send a driver to get a new lens from the camera house. Right. You know? And of course, as everyone in Florida knows, it's it's hard to complain about working in a tropical paradise and you know it's if you have to fly somebody in from LA or Atlanta it's it's not that hard to convince them to do it's just you know you have to plan for it plan plan the time accordingly yeah right. yeah your work has brought you all over the world is there any specific location that sticks out to you uh, uh, you know in your time in the industry anything you really like i have to hand it to iceland and new zealand they're fantastic uh, unique locations and they punch far above their weight in attracting new productions. And I think it has a lot to do with the cooperation from the governments, the local governments, in trying to attract productions to come. And they understand the economic benefit filming can bring to the community. Yeah, yeah. Kent, working with locations, how do you best prepare for situations that may arise with, you know, weather, transportation, things that are out of your control, but at the same time, you need to do the very best to stay in control of them when you're on a production set, because as, as everybody knows, time is money. Right. The management part of the title comes into play here. Uh, you may be the best scout ever, or even the greatest location manager of handling a single location, but on a feature where you're dealing with multiple locations and sometimes different cities, different countries, uh, the most important skill set here is communication and being a good people manager. Mm. And that's, of course, relying on the guys who are working for you who are handling the day to day on a particular location and are aware of certain problems that might crop up and making sure that they feel comfortable communicating with you that, hey, the locals here are saying this might happen. Hey, the locals here say, you know, this is an issue for this particular location. And as a manager, you're communicating with your producers and your directors and and the necessary, you know, appropriate parties and discussing potential contingencies and allocating the necessary resources to be able to handle that should that happen. Talk a little bit about, I want to follow up there on the importance of the interpersonal communication. You know, I, I, for years, I have people coming up to me and, you know, giving me their resume essentially on what skills they have. But if they can't communicate that in a couple of coherent sentences to me, I basically just tune them out because I figure like you can't work in this industry if you can't communicate with people because there's so many people on set. Tell me, tell me your thoughts on, on the interpersonal communication part of it. Oh, I, I think especially now that feature films and television, especially we, you know, we're have a couple hundred people on set. So it's more like a corporation than, you know, what the image that most people think of when they think of filming is, you know, a guy with a camera and a guy with a bullhorn and the actors. It's right. Where as long as you follow the one guy with the bullhorn, everything's fine on a big production, you know, when you have departments that are a dozen people each uh, and over a dozen departments working sometimes over multiple locations over a, over a city, then communication is definitely very important as, as is just the understanding of how to manage time and people. Now, you're also part of the location manager steering committee for Teamsters Local 399. What inspired you to get involved in this specific committee and, and touch on the importance of the Teamsters? Well, I personally believe that unions serve an important place in the entertainment industry. 
due to its unique structure where we're not hired by a studio for, you know, work for one particular studio for a lifetime, but we're hired on a per project basis. So we'll work for one movie, one, you know, one studio and one movie for whatever couple, you know, months, year that takes. And then we'll go to another studio and work for that studio and that movie for however long that takes. And over the course of our career, we, we end up working with dozens and if not hundreds of unique individual productions. So the unions serve a, a valuable purpose in order to facilitate that benefits such as health insurance and pensions are carried over from job to job. And additionally, they serve as an independent ombudsman that we could call on for assistance to ensure safety and acceptable working conditions. When you have a hundred different productions, obviously some of them are going to be better run. Some of them are not going to be as scrupulous. And you know, you want to have somebody you can call on that's not the studio to be able to say, "Hey, uh, uh, I don't feel safe here. What you know? Who who can we talk to?" Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And you're also a member of the Producers Guild of America and the Television Academy. What has your experience been with with those organizations? Well. I believe that one's experience within a community is dependent on what you're willing to put into it. And I understand that on any film set or even any large organization, industry, city, or even country can never perfectly meet the needs of every member. And so there will always be some sort of disagreement on how to accomplish our goals or even what our goals are, right? So like any large organization, it's... It's not going to be perfect, but I feel that they are important in amplifying the needs of my peer group, and they they do serve a positive benefit where it ultimately serves the best interest of the industry. And if you want more personalized service, there there are smaller niche organizations that you can join as well. Yeah, well, as as the executive director of a membership based organization, I can certainly attest to the importance of people getting involved and and uh, right. having their voice heard. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, like people always come to me and and use the term, "When are they?" or or, or "When are when are you know somebody going to do something?" And I say, "Well, who is the they and and who is the somebody?" <laughs> you know, right. we we are the the they and the somebody. We need to do something if we want to get involved and engage in something. Um, so you've met with leaders all around the world to discuss better ways to accommodate and attract filming. You, you've had a really good role in that. And now naturally here at Film Florida, we understand and appreciate the power of the film industry. Have you seen change in certain regions in the world after you visit them uh, to, to help them adopt more film-friendly initiatives? I've absolutely seen some positive changes. I've also seen some negative changes as well. Sure. Unfortunately, as we've seen in Florida, it can be easy to frame Hollywood as rich celebrities that we see at award shows and earning multi-million dollar paychecks. Mm -hmm. But uh, the reality is that aside from one or two celebrities on the set, the film set employs hundreds of working class painters, electricians, mechanics, cooks, and many of these roles that are filled by local hires from within a community. And... Additionally, we're housing actors and at a lo local hotel and buying food for catering and lumber for sets and gas for our trucks. And you know, a major motion picture brings in millions of dollars into the local economy. And without investment of building factories or permanently changing the community's culture. So it's a win-win for the community to seek out and incentivize Hollywood to come and film in your community. So... I feel when politicians place political rivalries over what's best for the community, it hurts the community as opposed to benefiting what hungry local constituents might benefit from. And talk about some of your experiences around the world, you know, helping places become more attractive to filmmaking. I've uh, consulted with a number of governments, sitting down with anyone from local governors to economic development ministers on a federal level, uh, some of which are more receptive, some of which are not. And of course, it's not just a single voice, but there's often multiple 
numbers of people who come by and they talk to. And there, you know, they're also looking at case studies. The smarter ones are, of course, looking at case studies of different countries like New Zealand or, say, Croatia, seeing the add-on benefit of film tourism that, like, Croatia got from Game of Thrones or New Zealand got from uh, Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And so it's not necessarily something that happens in a vacuum, but, you know, you're going to have some smarter politicians and managers who look at the entire field and the ones who just think of what what do they think of personally yeah yeah ken is there a way for people to keep up on what you're doing or you know any of your upcoming projects that you're going to be involved with i have a couple projects in development right now that uh, i'm not really in a position to speak about yet but uh, i do have an instagram that i'm pretty active on it's uh, kentograph it's a uh, portmanu of, of my name and photograph and that's probably one of the best places you could follow my activities on cool cool now so ken i i really appreciate you agreeing to be on the podcast with us to share stories and of course your expertise and uh, appreciate the kind words uh about uh you know filming in florida thanks for being on the film florida podcast well thank you it was a pleasure to speak with you today Thanks for listening to the Film Florida podcast. For more information about Film Florida, go to filmflorida.org and like or follow our social media pages. If you're not already a member of Film Florida, please consider joining at filmflorida.org. Please also consider going to our website and donating $20.24 for our 2024 fundraising campaign. Check out the Film Florida merchandise at filmflorida.creator-spring.com and please remember to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast.